This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Who should I share my poem to first? You know, we did Natsuki last last time, let's show her ours first this time. I rag on Natsuki a lot, she's... I mean, she's one of my least favorites from the game, but honestly, as far as Sundaris go, she's probably at the top. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better, either. But I, I chose so many of your words. Phew. Huh? Phew, what? Well, I guess anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling that you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to rec see someone recognizes my experience. Well, then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Uh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends for so long with her, then you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Yeah, she's she's into the guys who treat her badly. <laughs> well, I don't know, but uh, honestly, how could somebody so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. You know, she's not wrong. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of MC, and Sayori is my favorite character in this game, so... Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But come, think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, ha hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it hurt, doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Tell everyone what? That she likes spiders? I, if she's talking about it with everyone, I think they already know. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter! It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of a weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people found out that they'd make fun of you or think less of you. Like let's playing or streaming. <laughs> but that's just make what makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I, I respect it. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Okay. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, hey, Yuri. Let's see what you've written down for today. I only chose, like, two of your words. Sorry. Hmm. Well done, Artie. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Uh huh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see in here. That's the one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course! Is this the poem you wrote for today? 
Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an, as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, the hungry curiosity, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. That's a weird one. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying mo emotions through them. Yeah, if I, if I can take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way that it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Uh huh? She... she did? Yeah. She was... Talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into, as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right! I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that! <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Oh, that's sad. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. A wild hedgehog has appeared! Welcome, Sonic! I'm not sure if you've ever played this game before. It's a pretty obscure game that not many people know about. But yeah, we're having fun this Halloween. I'm going to try to finish the whole thing. But wowie, we, we need to pick it up, don't we? Monica. See your poem. Hi again, Artie. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's uh, kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy. You definitely are. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share, your, their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I would love to. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? You have no idea. The game literally doesn't let me pursue you just because they think I'm out. you're out of my league. They're wrong. <laughs> Aim high. <laughs> Who knows? You might make it. Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still used to getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I didn't really mean it like that. Oh, uh, no, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alrighty, let's take a look. In a book, reading rainbow, save me. Hey, that's the hardest level from Lemmings. 
The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. That sounds amazing. An endless poem of meaningless... Load me. That sounds suggestive. Hmm... It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I No, I never said that. Uh, it's just uh, a kind of thing that I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with the space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. I hate that. A poem could be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. I also hate that. <laughs> or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ha ha ha! That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, Monica breaking the fourth wall. We're gonna ignore that. Hey, Sayori. Saving best for last. Artie! I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Ah! I'm not hiding anything! But your poems are so good! Yesterday's and this one, too. You must have lots of experience. <laughs> Surely this isn't your first day writing poems. No, it's not. It's my fifth time. Monday was my first time. <laughs> you can't tell me that you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Uh, no way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Stop thinking weird things, idiot! I, I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? <laughs> I went to my grandma's. She was nice. The end. That's not a poem. But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. A great big adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that! <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings for you than I can for myself. We have this kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? Uh, I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Hmm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Artie, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've ever written something for me. I wrote one for you yesterday, too. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening any anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we get home. Really? Snap! Ah! ah I broke my pencil! Sayori hands hastily bends to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk behind her to support herself, knees shaking, arms sweaty, mom spaghetti wet. I I'm a little clumsy today. Ha <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I just wrote 20 random words down. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. 
I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. What an image. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all running, rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf of all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off of my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf you could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I can hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap! Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did! I didn't just copy this from the internet, you know. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot! And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? That's not till later. I mean, what? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Oof. Aha, uh -huh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Janae! <laughs> Welcome to the spooky, scary Halloween stream of Doki Doki Literature Club, except it's still very cutesy right now. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Ugh, we're not- we're only halfway through the first act and it's all- ugh. Okay, this is gonna take a while. I wanna do it all though. Okay, everyone! We're all do re done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of making any new members. That That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori's been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Nothing gets people coming like pamphlets. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Performing? <laughs> um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance! Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is that we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Nobody is going to do that. Sayori's putting on all the posters, uh, putting on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been covering a poster, holds it up for me to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting up those posters, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? W well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them for to recite their poems out loud for a whole room of people. Wait, it has to be our own poems! I thought we could choose our own! <laughs> I guess I kind of overlooked that. Uh, so I'm sorry. 
but I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of the club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. I don't think it will. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. I'll do the last one. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? No. <laughs> to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know, we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. We have to find a two-minute poem? <laughs> no! <laughs> this is like nightmare scenario right here. This is where the horror kicks in, people. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. Way to suck up to Monica! This is a terrible idea. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... <laughs> Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine! I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha! <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Wow. <laughs> oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. <laughs> no way! Monica! This is too sudden! Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone else feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply unnatural? Either way, I just can't stop clapping for her for some reason. I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica fi finishes the recitation, yet Natsuki just doesn't exist anymore. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! Ha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Whoa! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri's got the right idea. If you're terrified of, like, giving a speech or something, and you, and, like, everyone in class has to do it, do it early. Give your speech early for two reasons. One, professor will be more lenient on grading if you'd go, like, first. Two, if you go, if you think it's best to go last, you're going to be literally just stewing in fear for the entire class. Whereas if you get it over with, guess what? Then you can just relax for the rest of class. Take it from someone who hates public speaking. That's how to do it. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? I told you, she wants to get it over with. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform the sharp syllables into a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure as she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling, 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 <laughs> whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Oh, 
I know Sayori's my favorite, but Yuri's a close second. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay! I guess I'm next then. Oh no! I'm going next! <laughs> Sayori hops out of her chair and walks cheerfully to the podium. Han read first. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. Thank you for not suggesting to picture everyone in their underwear, because that is a terrible thing to do while giving a speech. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see. I see. Okay, then. See where he begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Hehe, <laughs> even Artie liked it, and he's the harshest critic. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? <laughs> it came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean! Well, that's... that's well, I, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> Don't make me go before Artie. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Artie lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Wow! Rude. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Fear. Hair. Bittersweet. Rain cloud, suicide. Thank you. <laughs> it was great! <laughs> I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident of my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Well, I only wrote 20 words. That's something that'll improve over time, though. No, it won't. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, this poem is called... Jump! Dun! 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 Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat, just like the big bad wolf. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I could put what on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's kind of the interesting thing. Some people are like, putting, doing something in front of totally random strangers, don't care, they'll never see me again, I'll never see them again. And then there are people, but like, doing it in front of my friends is embarrassing. And then there are people who are like, doing it in front of my friends is fine, because they won't judge me. But doing it in front of random strangers, they will. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy who I can do stuff in front of my friends, but not in front of random people. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. 
Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too! <laughs> I know your poems are really crappy, so that's probably for the best. Doesn't have to be your own. I'm gonna read one of Yuri's poems out loud. <laughs> I'm already pleasantly surprised to see that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem, Monica. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make us such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well... Ah, uh, yeah. How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Artie. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. How enthusiastic. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... I mean, I would still walk home with Sayori. Now, if Monica wanted to walk home with me, you better believe I'd be walking home with Monica, but I, would st I wouldn't ditch my best friend. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Well, yes, but that's not the point. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. Not to mention we live right next to each other. I, I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Artie. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time. 